So what I'm going to focus on mainly in this lesson is scales and intervals and how we can take the musical materials that we know or that we need to learn um, and apply them to whatever song we're trying to play over. I'm going to basically take you through one string scales. Uh, I really believe that learning scales along one string is incredibly valuable uh, for slide guitar playing but also conventional guitar playing and it'll help map out everything for you. The other big benefit is then that what I show you here will apply to any tuning. So the fact that I'm an open E is kind of irrelevant really. You can apply this to any tuning you want to use. Okay, so now let's look at minor stuff. So I'm going to think natural minor scale. Um, so this is related to the major scale. If I'm playing in E minor, the related major scale is G major. So essentially what I'm playing here is the same notes as G major, but it's going to sound completely different because it's a minor scale. So this is one of the big confusions that people get with modes and everything. You need to think of this as a minor scale. Um, so again, I'm going to do it up one string. So we're going to do the same thing basically, we're going to think about chord tones, the root, third, fifth, seventh, and we're going to have extensions as well. So the chord tones here are going to be a root, a minor third, a fifth, and a flat seven or a minor seventh. So the root of the scale is of course there, and we know that the root and the fifth are going to sound solid and stable. So here's the root, fifth. And then we'll look at the minor third, which is down here, down at the third fret. So in this case, it's a G. And in this case, the seventh is going to be the minor seventh. Okay, so that's going to be up at the tenth fret. So the seventh again is, is a chord tone, it's part of the chord. Probably sounds the most distant of those four notes, um, but you know, it's all very relative um, and it's, you know, it's clearly a constant note that fits within the chord. Um, what we're going to look at now is the extensions. So we've, in this case, in this scale, we've got a ninth down here, we've got the eleventh, this time we've got a flat 6 or a flat 13. Okay, so we've got, I'll go through those. So here's the 9th. Sounds beautiful on a minor chord. Then we'll do the 
flat 13. So the flat 13, uh, because again, it's a semitone away from a chord tone. This is, this is similar to the major scale ones. It wants to resolve down to the fifth. And that ninth, it can have a tendency to resolve to the minor third. Um, but I think it's, it's a little bit more stable than the, the flat 13. So it, it's, you know, you can sit on it a bit more comfortably than you, you could on the flat six necessarily. However, you know, that it's got a very, that flat 13. It's got a very particular character. It's got a sound of its own. Um, and it, it's getting, as I said, it's getting to accept these sounds for what they are um, and spending the time not to just jump off that note as soon as you play it. Um, thinking, oh, it's a wrong note or anything like that. It, it, it's not. It's, it's part of the scale. It's a beautiful sound, and it's learning to incorporate it in what you're playing. Okay, let's look at the third type of chord, dominant chord. So what we're going to do here is play mixolydian over it. So this is like a major scale with a flat 7, is, is a nice way of thinking about it, because it's more of a major type scale than a minor type scale. Um, and if you know your major scale, all you have to do is flatten the seventh note. So up here, instead of play this note, so the scale becomes okay. So I'm going to play that over a loop. I'm just going to focus on chord tones first of all, so I'll just do the same thing, root and fifth. Now look at the third and the seventh. Here's the root. Those are going to fit nicely over the chord. Again, fifth and root, solid, stable, um, easy to hear. The third tells you whether it's major or minor. The seventh is giving you that kind of dominant seventh sound rather than a major seventh. Um, and then we're going to add in extensions again. So we've got the same extensions as we had in the major scale. We've got ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. Here's the ninth. <laughs> Here's the 11th. 
6th or the 13th. So again, it's just learning to get those sounds under your fingers. Um, the the 11th is, is kind of one side of that scale, and the 13th is the kind of other side of it. The 13th is a bit warmer sounding. The 11th is maybe a bit colder sounding. The 9th sounds great on a dominant 7th chord, and it's very common to play 9th chords. Um, so all of these are available notes. But again, it's, it's up to you to kind of spend the time and get the sounds in your ears. So to sum up where we've got to now, Basically, we've got chord tones, we've got root and fifth, which are solid and stable. We've got third and seventh, the guide tones, which give you the character of the chord. And then the remaining three notes of the scale, the ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth, which equate to the second, the fourth, and the sixth of the scale, are going to give you more colour. So what we're trying to do is just learn to hear these different sounds and just to recognise them and accept them. Some other things that will be useful, I think, here are to think about pentatonic scales. Now, I'm not going to go through these in the same level of detail that I've just gone through the other stuff, but just to say that um, if you're playing over something minor, you can play a minor pentatonic scale. So if it's in E minor, you can play E minor pentatonic. E minor pentatonic will also work on other things as well, but you know that's a good starting point. If you're playing on a major type thing, you could play E major pentatonic if you're playing in E major. So basically these pentatonic scales are just five note versions of the other scales we looked at. So minor pentatonic um, is, is a minor scale with only five notes. The major pentatonic is a major scale with only five notes. Um, so when I was a kid and I was trying to figure this out and I didn't know anything, I would, you know, I knew my pentatonic scale. In fact, I only knew my minor pentatonic scale. And I would just move around trying to figure out which notes fitted until I could see, oh, it must be that pentatonic scale. And that's not a bad way of, of, of going about it. You know, you kind of using your ear and then unlocking something and going, oh, okay, now I can see it's G minor pentatonic. So great, I'll, I'll play using that scale. So a few tips that are worth sharing here are the relationship between major and minor pentatonic. So if you don't know how to play a major pentatonic, um, let's say we're in the key of E and we want to play E major pentatonic, just go down three frets and play the minor pentatonic. So, so in, in this case, I'm in E, I'm gonna go down to C sharp minor pentatonic. So if I go down from the 12th fret, which is my E, and go down, down three frets, I hit the ninth fret, which is C sharp, and that'll be shape one of my minor pentatonic scale. So an easier way of thinking might, about it might be that C major pentatonic is the same as A minor pentatonic, for instance. And this gives us another little trick which is if you're playing, if you get used to playing things, you know, I, I played a lot of blues um, when I was a kid um, and minor pentatonic worked great over things. But if you're playing over real major type things, um, you know, and it's clearly a major chord progression, then a good trick is say I'm in the key of C major, I'll just play A minor pentatonic, basically. So again, drop down three frets and just think minor pentatonic. And that works every time as well. So the, these are some ways that you can use the pentatonic scale. I'll include these shapes for the pentatonic scale in the resources, um, but I'm conscious this video might get quite long if I go into them all in the amounts of detail that I've just done. So, um, you know, dig those out and, and hopefully these tips will help you apply that. So what else? I mean, it's not just about scales. So I, I just want to address a few other things to think about. Vocabulary is very important, so learning language, learning ideas from other players is super important and the best way of doing that is by ear, by trying to work, and the best way of doing that is by ear, by trying to work things out from recordings. You can take as long as you need to to get, you know, a really short idea, it, it'll take ages when you first start doing, but this is the key to developing, having something to say and, and you'll you know, it's very much standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, these people have dealt with the musical materials that we're dealing with and they've discovered these things. So let's kind of find out what they discovered and then build from there. Another thing is to think about other elements of music. So we're not just thinking about the notes we're playing. We're thinking about the tone we use, the sound, you know, what effects, what guitar, what pickups. 
Are we using fingers, pick, what kind of slide? All of these things are going to affect your sound. Rhythm is super important. You've got to get to grips with timing and, and where to place notes. If you think about music as what to play and when to play it, what is all these notes and scales and all this stuff and the chords that you use, the timing of it is equally as important and the groove and the rhythm. So that's the when to play stuff. So you need to address that. And, you know, if you're playing along with good backing tracks or, or a recording, then, you know, trying to lock in with that rhythmically is really important. A final thing which, um, which I did a lot of and helped me a lot with not being so frightened to improvise, um, I had a wonderful teacher, David Tronzo, who used to um, regularly, I'd come in for my lesson and he'd just start playing a chord progression. And I was unpacking my guitar and he'd say, play, play. And I'm going, well, I, I don't know, what, what are we playing? What are we doing? It doesn't matter, just play. And so basically he would have me soloing over stuff that I had no idea what the chords were, I didn't know what key we were in. I, I knew nothing about the song and I had to very quickly use my ear and work out how I could fit in with this music. Now, you can do that with, a, a, you know, another person like that. You can just put on random recordings and just try and play along with them as an exercise to train your ear. And what I found it just helped me with was it took away that fear of playing wrong notes or being lost because I, I got, you know, I got to the point where I could get out of trouble um, when I needed to. And I think that's very valuable training as well. So don't be afraid to just put something on and just play along. So in conclusion, I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Comment below, subscribe. Um, I, I think it's very important that you play with professional backing tracks or even better with real recordings, you know. Then you can say, oh yeah, I jammed with Ry Cooder or Derek Trucks last night because you're playing along with the recording. You absorb so much from hearing these great players and just picking up little things along the way and the feel of the track and everything like that. So wherever possible, try and play with real recordings. Second best is just backing tracks and those are fun to play over. And then, you know, you can create your own loops quickly with a loop pedal or, or, or whatever, you know, recording software you've got, that works too. But just always try and make sure you're playing with things that are professional sounding uh, in time. All of this is a ton of fun and it will make a massive difference to your playing. So what I've shared in the video today is about, you know, really trying to dig deep and understand how what you're playing works over the chords, uh, over the chord progression. Take your time with that. Um, and, and try and, you know, when you're jamming over tracks as well, just something to think about is really trying to um, have a purpose in mind rather than mindlessly jamming. So it's really good to take some of the general stuff that you're practicing and apply it to the track. So if, you, if you're working on a particular technique or a rhythm, you know, say, okay, for the next two minutes, I'm going to focus on this when I play over it. Um, and that way you really start to integrate the things that you're practicing with the jamming that you're doing. And then of course, you know, just jam sometimes as well. But I think that's a very efficient way of practicing. Happy sliding.